ATAR. So, you've sat through year 12, you've done your assessments, they've all been moderated, they've worked out your final grade. Now it comes to determining your ATAR. But you might have absolutely no idea how they do that. So here's some help for you to understand. The ATAR is the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank. It compares your scores in Year 12 to every other student who has completed the SACE. It ranks you as a percentage out of 100. That's why it's called a ranking. And it's used for tertiary admission. That means anything beyond school. So you're in secondary school at the moment, you can go to tertiary education. So that's universities. Calculating your ATAR is a couple of different steps involved. So firstly, your best raw scores from 90 stage 2 credits are chosen. Talk about raw scores in one of the videos earlier about how your final grade is determined. But you do the best you can and you will get a score out of 20 for each of your subjects. From that, they choose the best 90 stage 2 credits for you. So you don't have to tell them which subjects to choose, they will automatically take your best ones. What they do is they add these up to give you a score out of 90. That's called your aggregate. So you get your raw scores, combine them all together out of 90 to give you your aggregate. What they then do is convert that to an ATAR. So that aggregate is compared against all the other students and you are ranked as a percentage out of 100. This is your ATAR. 99.95 is the highest ATAR you can get. This means you're in the top 0.05% of all students. You've got to remember it's a percentage ranking. So if you get an ATAR of 80, that means you are in the top 20% of all students. So your aggregate was in the top 20% of all students who sat the SACE that year. So here's an example. We've got our student, they've done photography, health, math studies, EALD and research project. You can see their grades there, C plus, C plus, a D minus for math studies, struggle with that one a bit. C for EALD and a C for research project. So this student has got their SACE. They've done their research project, they've passed three year 12 subjects of 60 credits, so they've got their SACE. If we add up these scores out of 20, we end up with an aggregate of 40.8. Now that, for this year, for that student, equaled an ATAR of 36.65. Not too great. That means that that student was in the top about 64% of all students, which sounds better than saying the bottom 36%. So an ATAR of 36 won't get you into any university courses. The good thing for you to learn from this is that C's will not really get you the ATAR you want. So if you want to be getting that ATAR that puts you in the top 30 or 20%, 70 or 80 ATAR, you need to be working hard and getting up to your B's. So let's have a look at a student who did a little bit better. This student here did chemistry, English, general maths, biology and research project. You can see their grades there, um, ranging from a C plus to an A. They got an aggregate of 63.4 from adding up all those subjects. Overall ATAR, 72.7. That looks a fair bit better than 36. Just from taking some of those grades from C up to a B. So this is where it's really important you push yourself in year 12 to get the best grades that you can. Let's look at another student. This student has some uh, 10 credit subjects. So they've got tourism, physics, math studies, EALD, integrated learning, music and research project. So again, it doesn't matter if they're 20 credit or 10 credit ones, they will just take the best possible combination to give you your score out of 90. So this aggregate was 80.3. So you get 80.3 out of 90, that sounds pretty good. But when you convert that to an ATAR, that's 95 out of 100. That's even better. That's the top 5% of all students. So you don't have to be perfect to get a high ATAR. You just have to work hard and try and get the best grades you can in your subject. There's a conversion table which you can search for from um, SATAC, and there is a video on SATAC if you want to have a look at that. Each year the conversion of aggregate to ATAR can change. So this is the one from last year. So if you got an um, aggregate of 89.8, you'd still get 99.95. And then just showing you some of the different values. So even getting an aggregate of 63.8 will give you an ATAR in the top 30%. The best advice I can give though, is just do your best. Don't worry about moderation, scaling, ATAR conversions. Don't try to calculate what your ATAR is going to be, because a lot of things are going to have an impact on it. So just do your best, get the best grades you can, and let the numbers work themselves out. Chill.